I'll show you how to apply both destructive and non-destructive filters to your images in Affinity Photo on iPad. First, when working with layers, it's crucial to identify and select a raster layer that you want to apply a filter to. For example, if I open the Layers panel, on the right here, we'll see I've added an HSL Shift Adjustment Layer. Before applying any kind of filter, I will want to tap and select the background layer. As we can see from the thumbnail, this layer contains the image information. With the correct layer selected, I can now move across to the Filters panel. By default, this list contains the full roster of filters available to us. I can, however, narrow the list down by filtering based on type. At the top here, I'm looking for Haze Removal, which I will find under the Colors category. I can tap to apply the filter. It will briefly run through a channel-based analysis, then present some options on the left we can control. In order to discover what each control is, I can tap on its icon. With some filters and tools, this will also cycle through additional options. But for haze removal, we only have three controls. Distance controls how far back the haze should be removed. For my image, I'll make sure this is set to 100%. Next is the overall strength of the haze removal, which I'll increase. The third option is exposure. This can be used to correct under or over exposure, which is usually as a result of modifying the strength. On the top context toolbar, I can also tap here to enable a split view. This produces a vertical bar that I can tap drag on to preview the before and after for the effect of the filter. Tapping the icon again produces a mirror view. This is a very effective way of previewing what the filter is doing to the image information. Tapping a third time returns to a regular view. Now I'll tap the check mark icon to apply this filter. Now this is what we would refer to as a destructive operation. The effect is committed to this background pixel layer. If we wanted to remove it, we would have to either undo the operation, which can be performed with a two finger tap, or duplicate the layer before running the filter on it, so we have a backup copy. Duplication can be performed on the commands menu up here. Fortunately, Affinity Photo has a wide subset of its filters available as live filter layers, which are non-destructive implementations. On this image, I'll open the Filters panel, then I'll enable Add Live Filters near the top here. This will reduce the number of filters available to just those that can be applied non-destructively. I'll add a Clarity Filter to this document, and I'll bring the strength all the way up which will enhance apparent structure in the image. Now if I open the Layers panel, we can see that this Clarity Filter has actually been added to the Document Layer stack as a live filter layer. This means I can easily hide the layer to stop it rendering on the document, then show it again to bring the effect back. If I select another layer, the Clarity options will disappear, but when I select the Clarity layer again, they will reappear allowing me to change the filter settings at any time. Live filter layers also have their own mask, so you can apply them selectively to areas of your image or document. In this example, I will remove the effect from the bottom area of the image, as I feel it looks too harsh. To do this, I'll select the Paintbrush tool, then make sure I'm using a soft round brush by switching to the Brushes panel, toggling to the Masking category, and choosing one of the soft brush options. I'll make sure my brush color is set to black up here. Choose an appropriate brush width, then just tap drag to brush on the bottom area here. We will see the clarity enhancement disappear. Hiding and showing the clarity layer will confirm that this area is now unaffected by the filter. Another powerful example of live filters and their usefulness would be displacing an object, such as text. On the Layers panel, I'll show this Lone Island text layer, and with it selected, I'll go to the Filters panel, enable Add Live Filters, and add a Live Displace filter. I want to infer the text displacement from the water texture beneath, so I will tap this multiple layers icon, which loads the displacement map from underlying layer content. 
Now if I move the strength slider, the text displaces dramatically. This becomes very useful, however, if I open the layers panel, select the Lone Island text layer again, then switch to the move tool. I can now transform this text however I want. And the displacement will still apply dynamically based on the content underneath the current position of the text. I can also open the layers panel again, then tap on the displace filter icon here to get back to the filter settings and alter the strength further if required. As a final example, I'll show you how to stack multiple high pass filters quickly for a very useful sharpening workflow. I'll double check I am at the top of the layer stack here. Then once again, go to the filters panel, enable add live filters, and on the sharpen category, apply a live high pass filter. For the radius, I'll actually tap on the value here, which lets me type in an exact number. I'll set the radius to four pixels, then I need to change the blend mode. To do this, I'll open the layers panel, tap on layer options, and change the blend mode from normal to soft light. I'll now duplicate this high pass layer. I can do this via the command menu up here, or alternatively, I can long press on the document view, then release to bring up the quick menu, and choose duplicate here. On this copy of the high pass filter layer, I'll change the radius to six pixels. I'll duplicate again, change this copy's radius to eight pixels, and I'll duplicate a final time and change this copy's radius to 10 pixels. Now I'll open the layers panel. Swipe across on each high pass layer to add them to the current layer selection and hide them all simultaneously to remove the sharpening effect. Showing all four layers again reveals that stacking multiple high pass filters with gradually increasing radius values achieves a powerful fine detail sharpening effect with minimal artifacting, such as edge halos. And there we go, just a few examples of how you can use both destructive and non-destructive filters in Affinity Photo for iPad. I hope you found this video useful and thank you for watching.